So this day in history, it's kind of a celebration of someone that we lost way back in 2006, but it's his birthday today. So he he would have been, ooh, I should have looked this up actually. He was born, it's March 6, 1950, Hirotaka Suzuoki was born. Now, who is Hirotaka Suzuoki? Um, he was the original voice of G1 Starscream in Japan. And what's interesting about Hero and his depiction of Starscream uh, is very different than that of the Chris Latta that we're familiar with. But what's funny is that they both um, encountered each other at different points when they were working on the series. Mm. And he, Hero actually made a comment about Chris Latta's version of Starscream, saying that his was a lot more whiny. <laughs> <laughs> um and so it's 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 just interesting because his Starscream was a lot more of a uh, a playboy, mm. I guess is the best way. He was a lot more suave. He would have and been uh, sixty eight. He would have sorry. He would have been sixty eight years old. He would have old. been sixty eight today. Thank you. No uh, born in nineteen fifty. Uh, so his Starscream was a lot more suave. It was a lot more of a, a pretty boy ca- sounding kind of voice actor. And he would go on to play Starscream in the original G1, in Scramble City, in Transformers 2010, which was known as Season 3, the the 86 movie for Japan. And afterwards, he would pass away. And years later, um, there was, you know, all kinds of information that was surfacing. And he was supposed to reprise the role of Starscream for Galaxy Force, which was known as Cybertron in America. Uh, although due to illnesses and stuff that he was suffering with at the time, he wasn't able to do it. And uh, the voice that we are familiar with now for Cybertron or Galaxy Four Starscream, Takuya Karuda, he took o- took over the role, but he did an impression of Heroes Starscream. Mm, okay. So he still tried to stay true to it. And it's the same thing. Um, Daisuke Hak- Hakakura who did the voice of Starscream in Transformers Adventures, which is Transformers R.I.D. 2.0, same thing. Also tried to channel um, that Starscream. And ironically enough, he also would go on to reprise another role that Hero was known for. Hero was known as the original voice of Kakuin from the JoJo Bizarre Adventure series. Ah, okay. Um, so Daisuke would go on to do jo- uh, Kakuin's voice in the new remake of JoJo's Bizarre Part 3. So he's the original Emerald Splash. There you go. <laughs> there you go, exactly. So f- for people who aren't familiar with some of his other roles, um, and when I list them, you'll start like being like, okay, um, he was Kuno... Tatewake Kuno from Rama One Half, so right away there's the pretty boy kind of sounding voice. Kakuin, like mentioned earlier from JoJo. Uh, he was Dragon Shiryu from Saint Seiya, probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular character from Saint Seiya. Um, Bright Noah from Gundam, from Gundam uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. Commander. You know, that's a big character right there uh, that he played. Tenshin Han from Dragon Ball. You know, Definitely everyone knows Tenshin Han, but no one really associates with that voice too much. Yeah. And he was known for, you know, because a lot of it's in Japan, it seems like there's one voice actor that covers all of an actor's dub roles. So, like, we talked about how, like, um, certain actors will be like, oh, this guy will be in charge of all of uh, Batman, or Sylvester something. Stallone's roles or something, right? Yeah, or or, or all of Jackie I'm... Chan's roles for a Japanese dub. So he was in charge of a lot of Mel Gibson's stuff. Mm. So I guess it was like, well, pretty boy, I guess young Mel Gibson roles. Uh, <laughs> but oddly enough, he also, on the flip side of it, was in charge of all Rick Moranis' roles. <laughs> 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 so uh, that's, that's kind of a, a stark <laughs> contrast, but... <laughs> So, like, because he did Ghostbusters, he did a lot of... But the point is, um, he was a very talented voice actor. He did a lot of stuff. Um, and another weird parallel, unfortunately, yep. between him and Chris Latta mm-hmm. was they both died young, and they both essentially died young due to a form of lung cancer, which is... And, I, and, I, and it's crazy because I was talking about this with... Uh, with the voice actor of Rhinox, Richard Newman. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what's up with voice actors and smoking? Like, you would think, 
you know, this is your livelihood. And here you are smoking away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the it, it, it's it's almost like um like a hand model that loves, you know, what's it called where they they it's like Russian roulette but with a knife and they just kind of go up between their fingers. Oh, you know uh, what I mean? Like imagine yeah, yeah. being a hand model and doing that all the time to yourself. Like you know, you're you're ruining your livelihood. Five finger but, fillet or something like that. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Because a, a good example, and I mean, there's a few voice actors that smoke heavily that don't want it to publicly be known, and I won't bring them up, but you know those actors. But a good example is Scott McNeil. Scott McNeil smokes like a chimney. And I used to always be like, man, like, you know, thank God that, it, that you know, I guess because his raspy kind of duo Maxwell and stuff and his Proto Man and a few others, um, and his Ken from uh, the Street Fighter animated series by Ruby Spears, you know, like, yeah, okay, maybe the smoking lends to that. But there's a few other characters that he plays younger characters and stuff where it's like, Scotty, are you sure that's smart? Yeah. There's tons, but tons, of like, as, you know, guys who... Excuse me, excuse me. How do I get a deeper sounding voice? All the three voice actors look at each other. Start smoking cigarettes. Yeah, I could kid. almost imagine like Scott going into his pocket, putting a box of Marlboros on the table, and just going like, "This is where you start, kid." Oh, and then man. like right away, Michelle, like the TFCon panel queen, is gonna be like, "We do not, <laughs> we do we not do condone not that." Like, no, you got years ahead Scott of McNeil you. Scott is saying right here, "Your voice will come in." Like, I mean, I mean, at least they said at the end, like, "No, no, your voice will come in. You have a lot of years ahead of you. Don't worry about oh, it, yeah. your voice right now." <laughs> but it's 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 kind of sad that. Both of them, they they died very young. Yeah. Uh, similar age too, not not too far away from each other. Uh, Chris Ladd, I think, was fifty one. He was fifty six mm. here, and both of them lung cancer. You know, mind you, in Japan, smoking is a lot. It's it's a lot more. Um, I don't want to say common, but mm-hmm. it's a lot more socially accepted over there even today. Like you could still smoke in a hospital in Japan. Let's put it that way. All right. So it's it's a whole different. Uh, it's a whole different animal over there. So, yeah, so, you know, we just wanted to use his birthday coming up to as an excuse to talk about Hero and his career and what he's done and who he is. Because sometimes people, you know, we're, we're so aware of our American voice actors and we celebrate them so much that sometimes we, we forget or are unaware of some of the Japanese side of Generation 1 and all the other series and the, the great talent 